Hello YouTube buds. I just finished my second charcoal drawing. It's the Arc de Triomphe in Paris with a little person in front and lots of little people in it and I'll explain that in a couple of minutes. I still have it on my drawing board but I can't really do this film from where I'm sitting so I'm going to move to my computer because I have a few pictures I'm going to show you as well, some reference photos. Let's go over there. When I say my second drawing, charcoal, you know, it's not my second drawing ever. So if you're a beginning artist, you want to pick simpler subjects. This one is quite complex. It doesn't mean you can't try something complex, but it's not best to do that right up front. This is the original reference photo. If you were to do a drawing based on this, you would have to reject this reference photo because it's just not clear enough. And if the sculptures have any importance, they're, in the, they're at such a severe angle, you would have great difficulty doing those. And the face was not clear, though I did have an alternate photo to use for the face. I used the body shape, put in a different view of her face, and then this whole thing was replaced by me saying, well, I can do it if you let me pick an alternate photo and show you the alternate and I'll put it behind and replace it. This would be the view with her in front and then using a free program called GIMP, but it's really, it's like a free version of Photoshop really, but it's complex. I'm not really good at it, but I can do some basic things. And I managed barely to get her in front of this on the photo version of it and paste her there. And I told them later, I'm going to add a second car over here because there's so much space, I could tell it would look better. Anyway, that was all accepted. One thing that you will notice is with any photo of a large building, or if you do a house portrait, um, with photographic distortion, the building, as you go up, especially a skyscraper, it will curve inward like that. Most artists would not like do a grid drawing exactly of this as, as using that method because you're keeping in the distortion. If you want it straight on, you'd have to pick an alternate method, which is to know one or two point perspective. This one is basically facing almost directly at you, which I liked. And you don't see, except for this one edge, you don't see a corner at the angle. You don't see the, you're not viewing it from the corner of the building like this one. This one, if you did that shape, would require two point perspective, a little more complicated. You can look at my prior videos when I chat about that. This one is one point perspective. You look straight on one side then, then part of it goes off to a vanishing point. The reason you don't see this side, except for the top, you do. But the reason you don't see the, this side over here is because the vanishing point, if you can figure out where it is, it's right in the middle, basically here. So this edge vanishes to this side. You can see that side of the roof line going down to that point. So your angle's here are matching that. These things going down, one, two, three, four, one, two, those little details, they're all vanishing to the same point. There are these roof lines going to this point. The uh, amount of detail you can get does depend how large you got with your choice of paper. I would rather have this be like a 16 by 20 space. This is 11 by 14 total space. You can only do so much in that small space. Look at the pencil tip here. It's not sharp, but it's you get the idea. There, it's touching there. See, it's look how tiny that is. I could barely get certain features in that would make her somewhat recognizable. The details of the coat. I was able to get in enough where it looks nice as a as a coat. If you're a detailed person, I had to compromise on that and decide how detail do I want to get or how impressionistic do I want to be in certain areas and these I did not want to be as clear because they are even smaller than the statues and reliefs here these are two reliefs uh, there's some depth to them but not full and even some of these are relief figures this one here 
not a full round statue. In terms of basic landscaping, you want things in the distance to be not as precise. So these are far away, these buildings, trees in front of them or next to them. These are purposely looser lines, not as highly defined. In terms of subjects, I viewed these two sets of sculptures and reliefs and the person as equally important subjects. So I went as detailed as I could on those three areas. In traditional perspective, things closer to you would be more precise, but on him, even though he's almost as close as her, I kept his face fuzzier. He's off to the side, the car's off to the side. So I made that one a bit less precise on purpose for artistic reasons. He's in shadow, or he or she in this one is in shadow. And so, yeah, I added some other tiny people to help the viewer with perspective, art reasons and artistic judgment. I made the perspective more unnaturally go very quickly from up front to far away in a very short order. And to kind of prove I did that and to help the viewer say to themselves, well, how big are these darn things and how big is this building? But to add the little people now these are right next to the building, so that's about how tall a person is based on some photos I saw. They're actually slightly shorter than this, but there they are. He's closer to you and not as close as the car, so this guy's bigger. And these people are about right here, and there they are, tiny people. I was going to have more here. But they're off to the side. That was in the, an original photo I saw of the building. And I'm like, well, no, I'm going to take them out. I decided I did not like them over there. Too distracting. And then you have the size helpers one after another in the way I arranged them. One, two, three, four. So if people spend some time looking at this, which they kind of will because there's a lot going on, they will notice these eventually. I made her somewhat bigger than normal. Maybe she should be only about this tall. If you're doing true photo photography perspective. Now anyone viewing this would not know those little secrets or choices, but I'm revealing them because you are watching this video. So they're kind of like for entertainment purposes. If you go real close, you'll see, oh, these are blurrier. I guess I could have stretched to try to get a little more detailed. But I decided I want the figures to be somewhat recognizable in terms of are they people or horses was my goal. Are they table are the person lying on a bed? This guy's probably a physician, but I made them very simpler, almost stick figures. Then these were all people and some horses. And I decided I'm gonna make some I'm gonna make the horses. There weren't as many horses make them somewhat recognizable and there's three or four over here and then the rest are all little people it all started with 12 tiny faces on the top this is where i started and i didn't go to the edge because i wanted to show sky it helped with the massive look of it this is my first time going top to bottom pretty much because the way charcoal can smudge and drift, I didn't have to spray as often with the fixative, the temporary fixative, because I was going top to bottom and I was not, my hand was not rubbing on drawings and stuff, but I did have it resting on the glassine paper to protect it as I went. But I definitely had to spray. If you have questions, I'm sure I left out a lot of info, just leave them in the comments and press like and share. Share this if you have an artist want to show someone you can talk in the comments about any questions, ideas you have. So that's it for this one. So I hope you enjoyed that quick review, and I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye.